Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So three years ago, I tried to get a right to repair bill passed in Washington state, and unfortunately, I failed miserably. And a big part of the reason I failed miserably were lobbyists that showed up and made things up. As I posted here, I would record these hearings and I would show you our testimony as well as the testimony of the opposition lobbyists. And this gentleman over here said that when you go to an unauthorized repair center, there's a chance that TikTok may be installed on your phone, which was very disingenuous because only several months later, we started started to realize that the manufacturer that he represented, Samsung, was actually installing TikTok on people's phones. So he says, you need to fear the independent repair industry because they'll install TikTok on your phone. And then his own trade members start pre-installing TikTok on customers' phones, as I mentioned in these two videos, without consent of the customer. This is troublesome. We also have another instance where he said that, listen, we need to start having a dialogue. We need to start negotiating with the right to repair people, but they don't want to negotiate. And if there's no room for negotiation, then we can't get anything done. Yet again, this is another disingenuous statement because we haven't actually heard anything from them. I fund several groups in the state of Washington to try and get this bill pushed forward. And I have funded groups around the country to try to get this bill pushed forward. And none of us have, Im have email in our inboxes from any trade associations, from Tim Cook, from Samsung, or any of these companies. All we have are fake repair programs that don't give us access to schematics, board views, diagrams, chips, LCD cells, or anything useful. And we also have programs that give us access to $206 batteries to $150 smartphones from Samsung, which I went over in this video here. What we're really going to learn as time goes on is whether or not there is a cost for lying in the state of Washington. So it says here that the Fair Repair Act is passing through the House Committee in Olympia. This is further than it got last time, and it is a really cool step forward. It was voted on 7 to 6, so it is a narrow margin that this is being moved forward. It looks like a majority said that they recommended it, some said no recommendation whatsoever, and some suggested do not pass, and you can see the names of those individuals in the link down below. But this is actually moving forward. And the question that I really have, and I'm very curious to find out, is are there consequences in the state of Washington? for lying to a legislative body. Because when I come out here and I talk about my thoughts and my ideas and everything else, we may have political disagreements, philosophical disagreements. You may not like my attitude, but I don't come out here and go out of my way to lie to people because that's wrong. Sometimes I'll get things wrong, but I don't actually make things up and fabricate it whole cloth and then just have absolutely no shame about what I've said if it actually is proven to be completely untrue and completely baseless. We all make mistakes, but let's be real, what's happening here are not people making mistakes in good faith, it's people making things up because they know that if they make up enough nonsense, that it will scare the legislators out of considering something. And that has happened time and time again. We do not pre-install malware on customer phones. The manufacturer does. And yet we are the ones that get accused of it. And it actually worked. Three years ago, this line actually worked. This was the lobbyist that stopped anything from getting moved forward in the state of Washington. And what I'm very curious to figure out this time around, does it work? Again, being disingenuous, lying, slandering the opposition, making things up. It may work in the short term, but I'm very curious to see how the Washington state legislature works. Does that work in the long term? Because I know how stuff works in the state of New York. I know how the legislature works in the state of New York. They just let the lobbyists write the bill. Uh, TechNet, as I mentioned in this video, was actually given the ability to rewrite the law, and Governor Kathy Holchul took those edits and just didn't even bother going over any of them or even looking into any of the people that worked for this organization that may have actually benefited from right to repair bill passing because their phone stopped working. But that's a topic for another video. Do you think in the state of Washington that there is going to be a cost, a penalty, a repercussion for lying to a state legislator? Or do you think they'll just be able to get away with it? Do you think they'll be able to lie about the fact that independents pre-install malware on customer devices? Do you think they'll be able to get away with the lie that they have been trying to negotiate with us over the past several years, when in reality, they have fought tooth and nail to make our lives even more difficult than they were several years ago? Again... Uh, Lewis at fighttorepair.org. If Samsung, CTA, or Tim Cook would want to email, Matt, I'd be happy to take your email and sit down at the negotiating table. That hasn't happened. He's making it up. Will he get away with it? Very curious to find out. And I think we will find out as this passes out of this committee in the House and moves on to the Senate. I'm hoping that it goes well. And I'm also hoping that those who lie to state legislators are held responsible and accountable 
for their crimes. Uh, one of the things that I'm trying to do now is not show up for all the in-person things you'll notice in this uh, article that talks about Washington Public Interest Research Group that is hoping state lawmakers pass the bill and other organizations that are working to try to make this happen. One of the things I notice in all these Reddit threads when they talk about right to repair, like, there'll always be a comment, like one of the most top up voted saying, right to repair, I agree with, but I hate Lewis Ross. And, and I'm starting to take that criticism and trying to learn from it. We collected over $900,000 to my nonprofit, Repair Preservation Group Action Fund, two years ago, and Repair Preservation Group also got a, quote, small, generous donation of a million dollars from who is now my new boss to Repair Preservation Group two years ago. And we are using that money to fund a bunch of different grassroots advocacy organizations across the country to try and get something done. Uh, maybe my face showing up to talk about this stuff is not the best thing anymore. And if that's the case, I'm more than happy to have fresh faces show up that the state legislature, local and federal are familiar with that they have a dialogue going with already that may be more likely to get something passed that is not horrible more so than me just showing up and showing my face and it seems like they're starting to actually make some progress here and some of the groups that we've given money to are actually moving things forward in different states and i'd like to see what the chances are of this legislation being passed when there are other people advocating for it rather than me I am leaving room for the slight chance that I'm just not as charming as I think I am. We're starting to see things happen in Minnesota. We're starting to see things happen in Washington. And I mean, we already saw what happened in New York, but we don't want to talk about New York anymore. Anyway, do you think that lobbyists that make things up will be held accountable? Or do you think that they'll be able to get away with it scot-free? I'm curious, and I'll be watching along with you to see what happens in the state of Washington. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.